Hi there. In this video, I'm going to be using the FET simulations again. And in fact, I'm using this one here, resistance in a wire, to investigate the relationship between resistance, resistivity, length, and cross-sectional area of a wire. Now, this isn't an equation that you actually need to know for National 5. As I said, I'm really just going over this in order to look a little bit closer at relationships, direct proportionality, and inverse proportionality. So, first of all, resistivity. Well, that's basically... If we think about copper, which is a good conductor of electricity, it would have a low resistivity. Something which does conduct, uh, possibly doesn't conduct as well as copper, would have a higher resistivity. So in fact, copper, as I said, would have a very low resistivity around about here, whereas iron would have a much higher resistivity around about there, around about five or six, in fact, times higher. Now, you could see there that as resistivity, if I start again, as resistivity increases, the resistance is going to increase. And as it decreases, the resistance is going to decrease. Now, I'm not too worried about that. In National 5, more interested in what's happening with the length of the wire and the cross-sectional area of the wire. So let's have a look at that. Hopefully you should see, in fact, just by looking at the equation, we have L here, the length of the wire in the top line. And hopefully you should see that as that increases, then the whole of the right-hand side is going to increase. And therefore, the left-hand side should also increase. So as the length of the wire increases, you can see that in the animation down the bottom left. As length increases, the resistance of the wire is going to increase as well. Now, start again and just note that the length of the wire at the moment is 10 centimetres. The resistance of the wire is 0 0.667 ohms. So what's going to happen when I double the length of the wire from 10 centimetres to 20 centimetres? Have a look at the resistance. So as it's increasing, as I said, the resistance increases. And in fact, when I go up to double the length, so once it's increased to 20 centimetres, the resistance is actually doubled as well. Now, what that means is when we're doubling one quantity and the other one doubles, that means that these two quantities are directly proportional. So resistance of the wire and the length of the wire, that's directly proportional. Reset again, and we're going to look at area. Now, area in this equation is on the bottom line. And hopefully you should understand that if I increase this area here, because it's on the bottom line, I'll be dividing this part by a larger and larger number. So basically the right hand side overall will get smaller. And that means that the resistance, therefore as area increases, the resistance should decrease. Let's see if that's the case. And it actually is. So as area increases, the cross sectional area of that wire, then the resistance is decreasing. And to look into that in a little bit more detail, you can see that I'm starting off with a cross-sectional area of 7.5 centimetres squared. I'm going to double that to 15. Again, look at the initial resistance is 0 0.667. And when I double that area, as I said, from 7.5 to 15, what's actually happening is the resistance is halving. So when one quantity is doubled and the other one then halves, that means that these two quantities are inversely proportional. So the relationship, as I said, between resistance and length will reset again. As I said, when length doubled, resistance doubled. That means they're directly proportional. But when cross-sectional area doubled, the resistance halved. So that means it's inversely proportional. So there we go. Why not try this simulation yourself? Again, I've put the link in the description. So for now, that's us, and we'll see you in the next video.